Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the unfreeze, change, refreeze, change management model. Now, unfreeze, change, refreeze, also known as Kurt Lewin's change management model or Lewin's three-step model, is a method for managing complex change within an organisation. To stay competitive, organisations need to change continuously. Without change, an organisation will stagnate, be surpassed by its competition, become irrelevant and may eventually go out of business. So change is not just important, it's critical to every organization. Kurt Lewin was a German-American psychologist and is widely considered a founding pioneer of change management. But before we jump in and examine the model in detail, it's worth noting that there is some evidence that Lewin never developed a three-step model and that it only came into being after his death. So let's take a look at the model. So basically it involves three steps, preparing for change, making the change, and finally normalizing the change and associated new ways of working. The unfreeze, change, refreeze terminology comes from the idea of an ice cube that you want to transform into a different shape, such as a cone. So what's the best way to transform a cube of ice into a cone of ice? You can, of course, smash up the cube and form the fragments into a cone. But the easiest way is probably to melt the cube, basically unfreeze the cube, then place the liquid water into a cone-shaped mould, so change the shape, and finally freeze the ice again to form a solid cone, or refreeze. Now another way to say this is that unfreeze, change, refreeze involves creating the desire to want to unfreeze the current status quo, implement the necessary changes, and finally solidify the new ways of working into the organisation as the new normal. So let's take a look at the model in a little bit more detail. So the first stage is unfreeze, and this is about preparing to make the change. This means preparing ourselves and others within the organization for the change that is to come. Now, in this stage, you want to ensure that everyone understands why the change is necessary and why the change needs to happen urgently. Change can be required for many reasons. So that could mean in response to competitors, in response to new legal requirements, maybe to save costs or to boost profit or revenue. Now, in this stage, you also want to ensure that everyone understands what the organization will look like once the change has been successfully implemented. Again, this can comprise many parts, including how the organization structure will change, what new ways of working will be in place, and how old ways of working will be adjusted. Unfreezing involves ensuring that everyone has a greater desire to change than they do for things to stay the same. This transition to this new desire won't happen overnight. It will take time to get everyone on the same page. However, taking the time to get everyone on the same page and committed to the change makes it much more likely that the change will be a success. Now, the second phase of the model is change. And this obviously should happen once the first stage is complete and your entire team understands why the change is necessary and is committed to making it happen. And this stage isn't a single step, but it's a process whereby the transition towards the new way of working happens. In this stage, your team is unfrozen and moving towards the desired new way of doing things. Now for a really simple change this step could happen in a matter of days but for more complex change it could take months or even years. Now during this phase it's important to continually remind your team why the change is happening and how it will benefit them once completed. Now unfortunately with most large-scale organisational change, some individuals will not benefit from the change, and you need to foresee and delicately manage these situations. The final phase is the refreeze phase, 
And you enter this phase once all the changes have been made and people are beginning to embrace the new status quo or the new way of working. And in this stage, you refreeze the organization so that the new ways of working become the new normal. You do not want people reverting to old ways of doing things. And really this phase helps the organization institutionalize any changes that have been made. People become comfortable with their new roles, new interactions and new processes. Ultimately, the purpose of this stage is to ensure that employees are confident and comfortable with their new ways of working. And finally, after your team has worked hard to transition to a new way of working, it's a really good idea to take a little bit of time out to celebrate their success. This gives the team a moment to reflect and feel proud of what they've achieved. Now, as the model contains just three steps, the model can seem overly simplistic when you're thinking about embarking on large scale organizational change. And this raises the question of how do you actually go about using the model in practice? Well, one way to elaborate the model is to map it to Cotter's change management model. And that will help you see the key steps that need to be taken during each phase. Now, this combining of models isn't mandatory, but it can help provide you with concrete steps to take within each phase of the three-step model. So in the diagram here, you can see that we've mapped the two models together. And you can see that the unfreeze phase corresponds to these four steps. Create urgency, so create a compelling narrative as to why the change has to happen urgently. Secondly, build a coalition. So that means get senior people and other key people on board and bought into the initiative. Thirdly, create a vision. So you need to paint a compelling picture of how things will be different once the change has been successful. And fourth, we have communicate the vision. And this is super important to communicate broadly and frequently to ensure everyone understands why the change is essential and ultimately buys in to making the change a success. And next we have the change phase, which corresponds to three steps of Cotter's model. So firstly, empower others. So give others the time and the authority to make the change happen. Six is create quick wins. So schedule quick wins early in the plan and that will help create momentum and build a shared, a shared sense of positive progress. And seven is build on the change. Now, real change takes a long time. So this is all about repeating steps four to six over and over until the change is successfully implemented. And finally, the refreeze phase corresponds to embedding the change. So institutionalize the change by embedding it into the daily work of everybody within the organization. Now, as already mentioned, it's not mandatory that you combine the two models, but it can really help you understand in more detail what needs to happen in each phase of Lewin's three-step model. Now, if we just take a step back from the detail for a moment, the real power of the three-step model is that by containing just three steps, it forces you to focus on the three fundamental things you have to do to lead successful change. Now, there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with the model. In terms of advantages, then the three-step model is intuitive and easy to understand. Secondly, before beginning any change, the model forces you to take the time to prepare and motivate your team to want to change. Now, having a team motivated and committed to the change increases the odds that the change will be successful. And because the model is so simple, you know, with just three steps, it forces you to consider the fundamentals of what is important when managing complex change. And the model defines its three steps as being those things which are most important. In terms of disadvantages, then organizational change can be really complex, but the model contains just three steps. So for this reason, the model is often considered overly simplistic. And today, modern organizations are continuously improving, making it difficult to take the necessary time 
to pause and perform the refreeze step. So in summary, Kurt Lewin's three-step model is an intuitive and easy to understand model for managing complex organizational change. And because the model has just three steps, it's often combined with Cotter's change management, management model to make it easier to implement in practice. The strength of the model is that with just three steps, it forces you to focus on the fundamentals necessary to create successful organizational change. And those fundamentals are obviously prepare for the change by unfreezing, implement the change, the change phase, and finally institutionalize the change or refreeze. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.